Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We turn our attention to cricket. Ahead of the historic Biosecure Wisden Test Series between England and West Indies, which begins on the 8th of July at the Adjust Bowl in Hampshire, Cricket West Indies Chief Executive Johnny Grave chatted with our correspondent for the series, David Brooke. During the interview, Grave revealed that the CWI received a £3 million advance from the England and Wales Cricket Board to keep afloat during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, or an advance from the England Wales Cricket Board in April of our ICC distributions. We get ICC money in January and July every year, and ICC wrote to all the all the members asking if they needed any financial assistance, and we wrote back to them in April saying that we'd like ideally half the money that was due in July to come at the end of April, and for various reasons that was very slow and forthcoming, and uh, and the ECB offered to advance this to us instead, and then. They'll be paid back in July by the ICC, and we've done that before with the Bangladesh Cricket Board back in 2018 in recent times. And, and certainly that advance helped us, certainly with the cost of our cricket coming more in the first part of our financial year with our Super 50 in November and with those 10 rounds of championship cricket January through to March. And a huge amount of our costs are skewed to the first part of the year. So getting that payment in April certainly helped manage our cash flow and Look, I think every business in, in the world at the moment is, is struggling with COVID-19 and we're no different. But, um, you know, the moment we're, we've, we've got a plan in place that, that ensures our survival to the end of December based on a very conservative estimate of the revenue that we're receiving. Clearly, we hope that this England tour will uh, give our media and sponsor partners confidence that returning and, and hopefully we can be in a position to to, um, to get everyone on full pay uh, as soon as we possibly can. CEO Grave also stated in the interview that the division of revenue in world cricket is unfair and needs to be addressed. West Indies cricket, they get the thin end of the wedge. I think it's, it's all those full member na nations and the associate members that, 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 that aren't getting enough of the game's revenues in order to grow the sport. Um, you know, we've got a job to do here to reconnect to fans, to get and ensure cricket is a vibrant game throughout the Caribbean um, at all levels from primary school, secondary school, club cricket through our, um, our professional system. So um, the, the way that the international um, events from World Cups, you know, they're all the, the major men's events are exclusively now hosted by Australia, England and India, and they generate huge sums of money. You know, those individual nations will make more from hosting those events than West Indies will get from the ICC in an eight year cycle. Um, so, and even the, the money that is then distributed, you know, India get four times the amount of anyone else. And yes, I appreciate that they, they generate most of that money. It comes from the Indian market, but they already keep all the money that they generate for all of the India home games and the IPL. So look, I think we have to have more of a philosophy of solidarity. Hopefully, you know, COVID-19 and what we're all going through means that the game has never need to, to, to work as closely as it needs to do now to ensure that the game survives and that all the organisations, clubs and teams survive. And I hope that coming out of this that we can take a more um, sort of um, equitable approach to sharing the game's revenues, um, uh, not just from an ICC perspective, not just from an ICC events allocation perspective, but also from bilateral cricket. So, so at the moment when we go to England for this tour, they keep all the revenue. And obviously, when they come here, like they did in 2019, we keep all the revenue. But being in, in one of the smaller territories, clearly that is stacked in, in the advantage to the big three who keep 100% of enormous revenues and we keep 100% of much smaller ones. So I think we need a more equitable model and I think we need to start to act like um, we're playing in these leagues. And the, you know, the, the American sport um, philosophy is very much you're only as strong as your weakest team. And, by having all the teams being able to compete, I think we'll produce a better product and that cricket has and sport needs uncertainty. We don't want to go Absolutely. to play the bigger nations and for people to think that the result is a foregone conclusion. So um, hopefully that will, you know, that will be on the agenda. I will continue to, to lobby uh, and mention it publicly whenever I get the opportunity because yeah. I think the game needs to change. 
Lance, I think for me it's a sigh of relief that these discussions are finally being had. Of course, we all know and we've, we've talked about it many a times, you know, the unfair sharing of revenue when it comes to cricket. Yeah, well, an insight there into an aspect of cricket that is not talked about a lot. Of course, we talk about what happens on the field of play, but a lot of these decisions and a lot of these uh, concepts financially of how their game is structured um, have a pretty pivotal effect on the future of the game and the strength of some of these teams. And I thought those points were well, well made by Johnny Grape. Well, as we go to break, remember to catch Alex Jordan on the line with former West Indies top order batsman Ramnari Sarwan this evening at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. ECT on Sportsmax and 8 p.m., 9 ECT on Scene TV. In this episode, Sarwan speaks about his exit from cricket and being mentally phased out of the game. Well, my international career, my cricketing career, I should say, I've never really felt the stress of... Um people wanting you out of a system. I've always played with a joy and a smile on my face and, and um, I started to lose that. And from the time I lost that, I kind of lose it mentally. So if we were playing in, in Trinidad, my mind was probably somewhere in Australia. Yeah. Um, so mentally, I, I was basically framed out. Right. And once I got to that stage where I was framed out, um, it was always very difficult for me to come back. Um,